one, two, three. Check it out. This is Freddie Fox, a.k.a. Bumpy Knuckles, and you're listening to Roots Revolution Radio with DJ JFX and Shelly Roots, all right? So keep it gangsta. It's the Connection 2003. Peace. That was actually pretty big, the uh, the Hill Project in '91. Mm-hmm. How did that all come about? Um, KRS One asked me to be on this project. I, I, we were using the same studio, and I came across him in the studio one day, and he told me about this project he was doing, and he was like, "Yo, man, I would love for you to get on this project. You know, like I, I love your style of MCing, and I would love for you to get on." So the day that I walked in, I mean, I was standing in the room with the likes of LL Cool J, Queen Latifah. Kid Capri came and I was like run you know run DMC and I was like wow like like I fit right in with these guys too you know what I mean but you know the one thing that I liked about it was we all brought our part to the table you know human education against lies was like something that was like another step on the ladder of my success you know what I mean and as I looked at that ladder you know that was like one of the beginning steps you know, and I had to represent what I, what, on my verse, what I felt. Yeah. You know, and, and and I did that, and I thought that, you know, I, what I did is when I when I got the track, I studied Curtis Mayfield for about a month before I, because he gave me the track like a month before I did the verse, and I studied Curtis Mayfield for a month, listened to all of his stuff, and that was how I put the rhyme, you know, um, how do I say persona together in my head. I do that sometimes when I have to do a certain type of song. I'll find an artist from the era before me that was one of my musical ancestors, and then I'll study his work. You know, whether it be Molly, Mayfield, Al Green, you know, whoever. If I want to make sure, if I got a hard, hard track, like real hard, and I got to go hard, like a primo joint that I got to do, I'll listen to Teddy Pendergrass or somebody because I want to get the right kind of bark on the record you know what i mean like one of his up-tempo dance beats and i'll, I'll try to find my tone in something he developed all right let's, uh, let's, let's, speaking of one mm-hmm. the uh the, the malicious song 98 yeah I mean, that's man you say hey, still to this day you could throw that on in the in, in the spot yeah, yeah. and this man yeah that was hot i mean when i when premier asked me to do it i was more than happy to do it and um I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't think that it was gonna be that big. That actually toured off that record for three years, man. Wow. Yeah, that's you know? that record, that song. That's yeah, I toured off that song for three that's years. Crazy. Yeah, three years, man. We toured. I, I went on so many tours because of that song, and I mean, you know, a lot of it, it inspired a lot of MCs, man. And um, it, 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 I love, I love that when you can get in on, on a record and just give yourself to the track, you know. And I kind of let the music dictate to me what what I need to do. I don't just like some MCs get on and they just start rhyming to either too fast or not fast enough or I just listen to the instruments and the music and I yeah, go yeah. and I was happy everybody liked it. Yeah. So let me ask you another the kind of crazy question. Was there was there ever a primo track that you didn't rhyme on? <laughs> um actually I have about twenty of them in my computer at home, like, like I have in one of my, in my studio, Premier come by and just dump all the stuff. Just have 20 tracks. Yeah, I just got him, like you know, and he just like what it is is Premier has never done anything for me custom made. Everything yeah. he's given me has been something that somebody couldn't either figure out or or didn't want to rhyme on. So every track, and I just kind of take two or three here and put them on an album, and two or three more here and put them on an album because it, yeah, it's the same way with Pete Rock, Alchemist. Clark Kent, Diamond D, I got Showbiz Beats. I got just tons of beats in my computer from all of my friends. And then like Pete, I think I may have about 70 or 80 different Pete Rock tracks in my joint. Like he just gave me a stack of discs. And what Pete does is he'll take one beat that he makes and he'll make seven or eight different sequences with the same beat to see which one I like and yeah. I just keep them all. So you may pick just two, one, you know, for yeah. the and then one for the change. Exactly. Even- but I mean he he could he got like five or six joints wow. in one off of one track and he'll say, yo, this one don't sound like this one, but it's all the same sample. I just chopped it up different ways. So I mean I just keep them all and they tell me anytime you need a fox, let me know. I'll come mix it and then we keep it moving. So but Premier Beats 
I, he always just gives me stuff that people didn't either either want or couldn't figure out how to rhyme to. They don't sound like they sound. They all sound tailor made though. Ser- yeah. I mean, seriously, they That's, do. Like, you, he like for instance, because yeah. you, you come here, come on, Primo Steez. You're not gonna. It, it, I mean, it's not like for instance, you'll hear a Primo beat that maybe you did with something else, another artist, but it's it's not that grimy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just it just seems like or either the ones you end up going with or the grimy ones. Well, you know, just, you know what, what it is is he gives yeah. me joints and then I custom fit a style to it. Yeah. Like I got a song on my new album called Lazy that um I think he gave to Jadakiss and Jadakiss was like I can't figure this track out. Like so he gave it to me and said Fox if you want it you can have it. So wow. I custom fit my flow to the bass line and came up with this real crazy flow for and everyone seems to love this song. And the reason I call it Lazy is because I said MCs always expect Premier to bring 100% of the beat to the table so they get lazy and don't want to write. So what I did was I said, okay, if Premier give me 50%, I'll bring 50%. If Premier give me 80%, I'll bring 20%. I mean, so whatever he give me, I'll bring the rest. I don't want to overwrite the record or I don't want to underwrite the record. I want it to be a balance. So I try not to take his hottest, hottest, hottest stuff, but I try to take his his stuff to me is dope anyway. So his worst track is 50% for me. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and yeah. I just bring the other half and I make a balance and I make it what yeah, it's supposed that's to be. Right there. That's a real word right mm-hmm. there. Um, man. Oh, and I, well, he was, act, he was actually a big part of that uh, industry shakedown too. Yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, him and, come on, man. Him and Pete, yeah, and <laughs> Alchemist, yeah. Like, Dynamic duo. Yeah, that was my And then group. Alchemist is just a oh, man. Yeah, Alchemist man. is sick. I remember when, you know, <laughs> Alchemist, when I met Alchemist, we were on the Smoking Grooves tour, and he was so, you know, just like, he wasn't really making no noise. So what happened is he gave me a, he, he said, I know, yo, Fox, I make beats, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, give me something, man, let me listen to it. So he gave me this this tape. And I'm riding around listening to this tape. And I was like, yo, he got some hot stuff on here, right? So I took this joint and I put it on um, Industry Shakedown called Stock in the Game. And that's what made Alchemist recognize when I rhymed on Stock in the Game. Because the first question everybody was asking was, yo, you know, who did that track? You know what I mean? Who did that track? Who did that track? So sometimes producers have dope beats, but they don't have the right people rhyming on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's kind of like somebody that's like a cornball wearing a dope suit. You know what I mean? But you don't realize because this person is not dynamic enough to make you pay attention to what they're wearing. So when a, when a producer makes a track, you got to put somebody on there that commands people to listen, commands people to want to want to hear what what the what the what the marriage is. Like well, the MC, his voice. You know what I mean? Like. Wow, who is that? You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like when you hear MOP, it's like, you know, but no one ever asks MOP who did the track, because their voices are so dominant. You just want to hear that MOP yeah, m- mesh. You know what I mean? When I rhyme on people's joints, I'm so particular about people understanding what I'm saying that I I leave spaces for you to hear the music because music has to consume time and space, but lyrically you have to kind of box or bounce the track around and leave spaces for people to hear what the snare sounds like without your voice over it. I leave spaces and I'm a real, I custom fit my lyrics and my flow to every music, that I, every piece of music I'm on. Wow. That's dope, that's good to hear, you know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot of MCs can take some note too. Yeah, man. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, man. Definitely. Shelly Roots, did you have a couple questions? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because I'll take all the time off. I know, <laughs> as usual. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, this is Shelly, I want to ask, Ready, uh, what the driving force was behind your new album connection on BBE? Um, the driving force behind my new album was basically um, what I did was I took it when I did Industry Shakedown, right? I had experiences that I, I had experiences from being on tour, and those experiences from being on tour. I used those experiences with some of the new experiences that I've gone through in my life. My grandmother making her transition, my brother made his transition, and you know those those energies and those things that that ail you and those things that you know you go through in life that make you you know wanna wanna express. I put all those things together and compile them together, and I realized that my connection 
to when I say in the beginning of the song I'm connected to mom and pops I'm not just talking about my mother and father I'm talking about mom and pop record stores in the hood that make your record that break your record you know a lot of people just take it for what it is but I'm, I'm a lot deeper than that you know what I mean so I, yeah I just kind of built around a bunch of things that I was going through Uh, we were, we're putting some dates together right now. I have um, some spot dates set up here and there, but I, I hope to be torn between the spit kickers. I'm definitely a spit kicker MC. I would like people to know that. You know, um, um, the spit kicker situation, I'm sure we're going to pop something off around October sometime. Um, there's some other situations that are coming up. We got a Gangstar tour going out. You know, I used to play within their set. Now I'm gonna actually be doing my own set because I got like three albums worth of, four albums worth of music, you know, and, I, and then I wanna open or play within their set. So we got, this year is gonna be full of me on stage everywhere. And I can't wait. Look out for Freddie Fox. Why they call you Pumpkin Nipples? Um, because once, the name came from, I had a fight once, and, and, and my hand swole up. Only once. Well, that, well, that first, well, I had more than one, but the, more, the first fight, the first fight that my name, got, where I got the name from was one time I had a fight, I hit this person, and I kind of hit him before my fist was fully closed, and it swole my hand up. So this girl said, wow, look at your hand. They're like, you got like lumps on your knuckles. I said, nah, those are bump, bumpy knuckles. I got bumpy knuckles, and then I just, and I started saying it ever since. It just came right in. Yeah. So your album drops on the 10th of June. Yes. So everybody can go get them at all the stores. Definitely. You know, um, the connection, K-O-N-E-X, I-O-N, connection. And the reason I got that big X in the middle is because that's the crossroads, man, where we meet, you know, where, where hip-hop and the streets meet together and stay locked in. You know, X is one letter that if you pull it apart, it has no it doesn't mean anything anymore we have to always and that's a very valid letter you know because it crosses everything together you know and you can turn it any way it is and it's still there it's still intertwined you know that's why i have three x's in my name you know and you know the bottom line is people say oh well how did you why do you spell your name with three x's because one is the right way to do it two is expected and three is unexpected because if you say, well, if he changes Fox, the most he could do is make it two X's. That would, you know. And I, I just think that this album expresses my, you know, my love for the street, you know, because I still continue to do it on my terms. So, so on the 10th of June, Connection hits the stores and it's on and popping.